Mark Watts, LeadFTS.com. I'm here at the Spot Athletics, here with Jail Holdsworth, Zach Gallman, and Nick Bronco. And we're going to talk today about is some squat progressions. Anytime we have young athletes that come into our facilities, uh, the biggest issue is getting those athletes to be able to squat properly and coming up with some strategic uh, plan to get them to execute that proper technique. And there's a bunch of different ideas and different stages of that progression that we're going to talk about today. So, Jay, I'll start with you. What's the number one thing that you, the first thing that you want to do with that progression? And really, to back up, what are you looking for when an athlete comes in to squat? So, the biggest thing for us, first thing when an athlete comes in, we take them through an assessment. So, is our big thing. I think that that's one of the things I never understood that, uh, you know, people do free trials for a day and then they come in and they run a bunch of kids through and they do the same thing. They have no clue what's going on with the kids. They just made them sweaty and tired. So we bring every kid in. They have to do an assessment first. So we know what those issues are coming in. We put them on the sheet. We put them in categories. So we know where they got to start on a progression. So a young kid comes in. They're like a baby deer. They've never done anything before. And that's going to be Zach for this case. We're going to start them off with a wall squat. We're going to make sure that they understand how to keep their chest up, knees up. So we're going to bring Zach over here, kind of show him. So Zach's our you know, 12 year old kid who's never done anything. He's got a beard, buys beards, 12. It's great for everybody. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna teach him where to put his hands, put the bar on his back. So when we're doing this, the big thing is you gotta remember like these kids have never done anything before. So it's just teaching them, you know, showing them, okay, up you know, right here where you have this nice great traps for a 12 year old and then not up here on your neck. Just teaching them bar placement. So starting with the PVC, we start, we teach them where we want that bar because when he gets, you know, 225 pounds on there, we want to make sure the good placement. So we start from day one with PVC showing them placement. Then what we do is we make sure we get them close to the wall, but six inches away from the wall. So now, big thing from the wall, we joke around with little kids, we tell them we don't want you eating the wall. So we teach them how to keep that chest up, knees out. So he's going to squat down. We're going to talk to him about going down, sit in his butt back, his big cues for us. All of our athletes, whether they're eight or 18, they know the first movement in a squat is butt back. So we're going to teach him butt back, knees out, chest up. We're going to have him come down. And so a lot of times what's going to happen, the first thing you're going to see with young athletes like this, they're really poor hip hingers. And you see this with young athletes all the time. They just don't know how to hinge. So the first thing you're going to see is they're just going to bend right over and try to headbutt the wall and knees are going to pop forward. So we like this drill, especially for those type of kids because it really gets them through. So go ahead and do a couple of good wall squats, Zach. So great. So he's 12. He's a wonderful athlete and he's graduated already. So it's great. So nice job, Zach. So next thing we do with our athletes, you know, that assessment puts us where we're at. We don't have too many of our athletes start with this drill, but it's a great regression. Say you have someone who's been squatting for 10 years who has really poor mobility and they're not really understanding positions and squatting, you're breaking them back down. This is a nice thing for a guy like that or a really young kid. Will you, will you mess around with how, how close they are to the wall or where the bar's placed? Will you have them overhead or? I won't have them overhead, especially for young athletes. They're way too weak to maintain those positions. Uh, overhead squats part of what we do in our assessment, so we're gonna already see how they are through that. But in, in this drill especially, we want them to understand where they should be in the squat, the butt moving back, the knees staying out, the chest staying up. All those big cues that we use all the time when we're teaching a squat, no matter at what level we're teaching it. Uh, next thing we move to is uh, the box squat. Uh, again, it's again to help them teach, teach them how to sit back, how to maintain position. So we're just graduating over there from the wall and now we're coming over here and we want to use that exact same uh, cues that we used on the wall. So if Zach's our athlete, I'm going to take the PVC from him. So again, same thing. I'm going to have them use, you know, about a shoulder width stance. They're a little wider. When, uh, when we're teaching our athletes to squat, uh, I like telling them, you know, toes slightly out so they can get a little more glute activation. Most of these kids have really, really weak hips. So for here, we're going to use the exact same cues. Knees out, chest up, sit back. And so we want them to control to the box. I always tell them, if there's a thumbtack on the box, you should be able to stop right before you touch that thumbtack. So you want that kind of control. So that's kind of something kids can understand. I've never really put a thumbtack under there, although it might be funny to do. We'll try it with you, Mark. So go ahead, Zach, I want you to sit back and sit on that box, keep those knees out. Good, nice job, come on up. Now, one of the big things we're gonna see, so that's a little high for Zach, but one of the big things we're gonna see with kids is let's say, and I'll just take these out, this is a big issue. So Zach's really, really weak in his hamstrings, so he's gonna get to about there and he's gonna plop. So that, that's a very basic one. So 
after queuing, obviously queuing is, is the biggest fix for these things that gets them through. But if queuing doesn't work and they're not understanding it, and it's just simply a weakness issue, not just a, a motor pattern issue, because we can have, we've had an athlete that come in here that look awful, and in five minutes, it's beautiful. Now, if we, we stopped at awful and just said, oh, they're awful, and this, 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 this is wrong, and didn't go through that queuing progression and take time to teach, because a great athlete may have never done a movement, but they have similar motor patterns already developed. So once you relate it to them and cue it to them, then all of a sudden they go from an overhead squat that looks like they're the worst athlete in the world to they're a superstar. And so you gotta make sure you go through those cues and you have great cues so that, and they can relate to every age. But if they're really just weak and I can't cue Zach to stop plopping, then I'm gonna build them up. Now we've had athletes, you know, uh, in here that quite frankly were so weak, that was our start point with them body weight because they literally couldn't control to anything lower than that. Their hamstrings were so weak. So we can build that up. The great part about this is if they can't control with their body weight, they surely aren't going to be able to control their squat with weight. So we can build this down. So now we're not going to take Zach until he can get to parallel under control. We're not going to take Zach to the next step. The next step for us is going to be grabbing a, a kettlebell, going to a goblet squat on the box. And this progression, it's very, very simple. Uh, I think most people have this kind of progression they use with teaching younger athletes how to squat. But it's also useful for your older athletes as uh, warm-up drills to just ingrain those patterns again. So with Zach, he gets to this point uh, very quickly. And, and honestly, in our assessment, if, if, someone, if Zach really was 12 year olds and came in, I would never have him do these drills because he'd look great doing everything already. So we're pro progressing him right onto our last step would be, let's see how his front squat looks. Let's see how his regular squat sure, looks. Sure. You know, a lot of times I think people screw this up. They go, oh, we have this progression. We have to take everyone through the progression. No, you don't, because that's a waste of time I'm, for I a great app. I made that mistake before by trying to do too many things with that, and it just, it was just, I tried to, to, to address the 10%, and it wasn't really necessary. So I'm Well, and, and that's the one thing that, that you, you know, a lot of times, especially in a team setting, you, you see a lot of issues from your, your athletes who are your lowest level athletes, and then you put a progression in to get your lower level athletes up, and then all you did was make your better athletes worse by wasting time training in, on stuff they didn't need. We ever do anything where you start from the bottom like you know because once sometimes when an athlete if I've never been able to get lower into a squat I'm, I don't even know what a bottom of a squat should feel like I mean have you guys seen that where you start them at the bottom and have them adjust their feet and have them so they know what that position should feel like so Nick I'll have you so we do have some athletes who really have trouble hitting death so one you know I'll have Nick kind of address some of the ways we we do to get our athletes to get to depth so namely like we're going to use uh, some plates under the heels and we're going to use some counterbalance. So uh, Nick, I'll have you kind of demonstrate like plate under the heels, counterbalance stuff, like drills that we do with kids. And, and it's funny when we work with kids, uh, these things come out like, uh, like magic and, and parents think we're magicians. It's freaking awesome. But, you know, we'll take a kid who, you know, their squat, uh, their squat depth. So squat to like, you know, five inches above parallel or whatever. That's like everything. We'll be like, go lower. I can't. Go look, and they're literally, their, their patterns are so poor. So, and they're shooting their knees forward, everything's awful. So you can do this on a box, it depends what, what point in the progression. But, you know, basically, if we kick, let's still go ahead and throw this on the If we kick his heels up, what we automatically create is a, a hinge. Because now, he's gonna have to sit his butt back right away. It's gonna, gave him, it's gonna give him better uh, range of motion. He'll be able to get lower. So if you, and if you have ankle mobility being the limiting factor, that will really take, take, take care of that. It helps with ankle mobility, but honestly, a lot of kids, and this, this is one thing, so we know that when we squat all the way down on the bottom, that's when our glutes are really, really gonna be pumping hard. One of the things is, is some of these kids, their glutes are so weak that if you put them flat, their body stop them. So it's a functional limitation. So for us, like how do we get rid of that functional limitation? So uh, a great way, like I know, uh, so a, a great drill I've seen you use before is on, on the rack. So kind of show that one. So this, it kind of, this drill relates to this. It's just a different way of doing this. We used to have our athletes get in a bottom position. Then they can really feel what that position is going to feel like. And they go through their cues, where whatever cues you're going to use, shoulder blades, back pockets, whatever. And then we just try to have them let go right before they stand up. 
and they'll feel like they're going to fall back on their heels, but a lot of times it, uh, it just, it, it, at least it ingrained that I'm trying to push through my entire foot and really because they've never been able to activate where they're supposed to activate with the glute. So just have them in that position and then just have them stand up and let go right before they stand up. And that was a way kind of similar to the box. So what we do with that, go ahead and put the plates in. So with, with Nick, no, leave that there. So with Nick facing the box, and this is one we'll do, uh, a lot of times like this will be like more of uh, an adult population. Sometimes it's our kid population. It's teaching them how to do it. It's the same thing because really all you're doing there is creating a mechanical advantage with a counterbalance. Yeah. So Nick, go ahead, heels on the plates. So we have him hold the 10 pound plate out. So you're gonna hold the 10 pound plate out in front of them. Now what's gonna happen with this is when he squats all the way to the bottom, he's creating that counterbalance, just like hanging onto the rack. Gotcha, yeah. But now he's got to set that down on the box, hold that for a second, and then come up out of that position. So go ahead. So he's coming down, he's holding great position. Now here's what's gonna happen with a lot of kids who don't understand how to control this. They're gonna release this weight, and they're gonna fall backwards. Gotcha. And so what we want to do is be able to release the weight, sit, and come up and under control. So basically, instead of using the rack, we'll use a plate as counterbalance. Like we'll, we'll use this to help them with their depth. Um, I really find, especially with our female athletes, that just some heels under the plates, they're already really, really quad dominant. And so they, they try to use all quads. If we put the plates under the heels, now, even though that does kind of lend to a little more quad, they can sit back more, they can get all- the Mechanically, they're in a better position. Mechanically, they're in a better position. Now they can get all the way down. Their body doesn't give them that functional limitation of stopping them at parallel or above parallel, allows them to get that deep squat. Now, when they get all the way in the bottom, their glutes have to engage more. So even though that's something where someone would say, well, you're putting more on their quads. No, because we're allowing them to hit that deep position and allowing their glutes to function to get them out of that position. Okay, so once you're through some of these progressions, uh, what's the first thing? I mean, now do you have, you talked about previously the front squat. What's the first thing? When you add a ball, you're done with the kettlebell, you're done with the goblet type, where, where, do, you, where do you go to next? So we would, we would take the box away and keep them in goblet to make sure that the pattern's good without, because we all know, uh, you know, the box squat, I love the box squat because it teaches, it gives a great depth, you know, indicator. It gives them more hamstring and glute activation by teaching them how to sit back properly. But one of the problems is you take the box out and if someone's only used to only doing boxes, I, I've seen people where they're like, oh, I've only box squatted my whole life because it's the greatest. Well, the box squat is great for an athlete to be able to do some hamstrings, but it's awful if you want to be better at the squat because you have to get the squat pattern down. And if you've never done it, especially as a young athlete, you need to learn how to squat without a box, right. especially as a young athlete, because almost every sport you're in, you're going to squat. Mm -hmm. And so once we pull that box out, we want to make sure that they understand that yes, on the box, we want you sitting all the way back on a box squat. But when you're squatting, your first movement's back, but then you have to go down. Because if you keep sitting back without the box, you fall on your butt. So that's, that's one thing. So when we take that out, we want we explain to them, they understand. So that movement pattern stays great, but now it is a little bit of different of a pattern. So we have to make sure they're good on a goblet before we take them to a bar. So for us, we say 35 pound kettlebell. That's like where we are before we want to move them to bar. Now gotcha. our, our younger kids, we have uh, 25 pound bars that we use for our younger kids. So then for those kids, it's a 20 pound uh, kettlebell for the goblet. And then we'll move them to a yeah, 25 yeah, yeah, pound yeah, bar. So, yeah. but for, you know, a big 12 year old like Zach here, like that, he, we're going to start him at 225, no warm up. So, but, so Zach's gonna come on in, uh, and so he'll do our, our front squat. So um, one of the big things, hold on one second. So one of the big things with, with the front squat, I think, is that people, <clears throat> again, you know, one of my biggest concerns and biggest issues with, with young athletes, no posterior chain. And everybody says it and everybody knows it. But the front squat, the thing about, great about the front squat is, Kids, they can't keep their chest up because typically a lot of weak glutes. So what we wanna do, we put them in that front squat position, they have to keep their chest up. They have to keep their chest up. So Nick, when we see a kid's front squats, what are a couple issues that, that you see that we have to fix? A couple issues that we usually see with the front squat is getting them in a position of comfort too. Um, getting them comfortable under the bar. Uh, they don't, there's two ways to do it. So 
We either do the hands cross position or we have them to be teach them a good rack position. We don't like to fight them with it because they're not Olympic lifters. So if they don't aren't comfortable in a rack position, we'll put them in an arms cross position. Um, and then another thing is just getting that weight in a good position up here because when they if they have the bar sit too low, then when they go down, the bar's going to pull them forward. Sure. sure. Um, the biggest thing is keeping the cues consistent from the wall all the way through and just having the kids just, just chest up, knees out, hips back, get to depth, and then come up. Okay. One thing we did, I know that for, for, especially for beginning athletes that never squatted before, we ended up using that PVC pipe or hands-free just because a lot of times, you know, when they had their elbows bent, they didn't. So we'd have them the same thing with their hands up like they're driving a car with their steering wheel. Now that was a visual cue because if they did come down, if their chest came forward, their arms come forward, is really now they can keep that and wherever that PVC pipe would roll, they would actually keep that up. And so I know that we use that too as in. So when you're talking about like, I, and, and this is just obviously we all have our different things, but like I don't like that drill. Right. So one of the reasons I don't like that drill is because I can put, if I'm already to the point in the progression where I'm doing a front squat, I can put for a, a 12 year old like Zach, I can put a 25 pound bar in his front or 45 pound. Now we can get some sets of 10 with some decent volume. Right. So now you just practice. That's almost a regression back. Exactly. That might be yep. somewhere that goes to the wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would yeah. be something we, you, you know, you can start with a seven year old, but uh, again, anything where I can moderately load and, and get a training effect in the same type of drill where I would use PVC. I think that's one of my big issues today in today's world. Everybody's so worried about these progressions and regret, and you hear it all the time. At a certain point, you just gotta lift weights. And a lot of these kids, there's a lot of issues. Strength fixes a shit ton of things, especially for younger athletes. If you're talking about, you know, 17, 18 year olds and younger, now, if we're talking about, you know, 30 year old NFL players, we're talking, that's right. different. But for younger athletes, strength fixes a lot. We get a lot of people that do a lot of technique work with a, with a PVC pipe. And it's almost like that, you know, how you, can you throw a wiffle ball farther than a baseball? And it's one of those things that it almost inhibits technique because of just not enough load to, to do it. So. And, and that's the thing. It's, it's we talk about fire, firing mechanics. So, you know, if, if I'm going to swing a golf club and I'm going to weight the end of it with 10 pounds, now it, it shows up my whole firing pattern. Exactly. So same thing here. I need, you know, my, my young athletes to put that 25 pounds on their shoulders and feel what it's like to keep their chest up, to keep everything tight and a PVC they don't have to keep everything tight because especially a young athlete with great lat uh, you know flexibility great shoulder mobility they can go like this and bend over like this and still keep it up with a 25 pound bar now all of a sudden we got a little more skin in the game they're getting a decent amount of volume out of that and if they do drop it's not they can't just keep it up with their arms because it's too heavy to, to make that so that's just kind of you know our philosophy moderately load those type of things obviously you know, it's Zach's first day squatting. We're not gonna, you know, take him to a, a one rep max, sure. obviously. So Zach has a great front squat. So one of the things, so when we look at the front squat, so Zach obviously is, is using that progress, you know, is using double over instead of a rack position. So teaching the kids simple things. So I think this is one of the biggest things if, if you're gonna be teaching young athletes too, is, is simple like how to unrack the bar, how to re-rack the bar. So we always tell, tell all our kids, that never try to set it in here, oh, every time you gotta hear the clang before it comes down. Yeah. And so those are things. The other thing, and I think this is just as important for our young athletes when we're talking about this progression, is if you guys come in together, we're gonna teach you how to spot. Now obviously a front squat, you're not gonna spot, but you're gonna help him walk it in sure. so that it doesn't bounce out of the J hooks. So teaching those young athletes, one of the big things is huge for us here. We don't wanna train athletes, we wanna teach athletes how to train. And so- for us, you know, we can take our older athletes, put them with a the younger athlete, and say, okay, now you need to show them how to do this, because teaching is learning twice. So we want our athletes to be able to, for instance, um, you know, uh, we have athletes from Brazil in right now that don't speak English. So we have one athlete who speaks English and Portuguese, and I speak a little bit of Portuguese, so I can coach the lifts enough, right. you know, like, like chest up is paid par, uh, and like, like all stuff, like I can do little simple like phrases, right? So, um, but I can't speak, I can't explain everything we're talking about, posterior chain and all that, but what I can do is I can have Vitor show them and that athlete speaks athlete. And he can look at that and he knows. Good analogy. And yeah. so those are the things we want to do with our athletes. This is not just a simple matter of, can we teach Zach how to squat? 
can we teach him how to train and how to show other athletes? Because if he can do that, now we know he's got it mastered and he can move on. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys. That was, that was great information for anybody that's trying to get their athletes to, to, to improve in the weight room. So appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thank <laughs> you.